Oh, hello there. Yes, Friday at last. Nom, nom, nom. It's the Jubilee weekend, isn't it? Yes. Lots of people will be going out and having street parties, probably. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I've never been a great fan of the royal family. Uh, I think our present cream is probably one of the better ones. But as I often say to people, the problem with the royal family is you have to get what you're given. That's the rules. You can't pick and choose them. We don't live in that form of democracy. So I thought worthwhile today just looking at where we are in, as a country with the royal family. And one of the things about this Jubilee is I'm very aware of it's a very top down thing. There isn't necessarily this huge uprising of popular populisms, people demanding, oh, I know we're not supposed to have street parties, but God damn it, we have to have them. It's top down. We're being told that we must celebrate. Um, a lot of people in this country don't necessarily want to do that. Um, the Queen retains her popularity. Um, she's managed to navigate the royal family through some fairly difficult times and retains a level of support. She's a good one. Um, you might say she understands what her role is, which is to walk around a bit and talk to people. Whenever people say the Queen works very hard, I always think, doing what? I don't know. Um, if you look at the popularity of the royal family by age group, it is very clear that young people increasingly don't really give a flying one about it, I'm afraid. Um, amongst Conservative voters, it's, oh, the Queen's brilliant, isn't it? She work hard uh, stuff. But for the rest of us, it's a bit meh. You know, we can take it or leave it. Um, on a blunt level, just all of this kind of saturated news story stuff about, about the royalty tends to turn people off. Increasingly, if you look at the statistics here, people don't really want to know. Um, the standard arguments about why we have a royal family are, in 2022, are looking increasingly thin. If you think about, for example, the idea of, oh, they're really good for, you know, bringing foreign tourists here. Well, yeah, possibly. But if you go to Paris, if you go to Paris, the Palace of Versailles near Paris, there's no king or queen in there. It doesn't stop it being a big tourist attraction. Yeah, nobody goes to Buck House expecting to see the Queen, do they? They stand outside those gates and snap um, uh, people wearing bearskins at, uh, I don't know, 500 paces or whatever. That's realistically about as far as you get. Yeah, there's too much. And um, if you think about, again about recent stuff that we've had, it's increasingly looking anachronistic. Um, when the royals go out to the Caribbean islands and they try to recreate the world that was there in 1950, it's looking a bit dodgy. And, you know, especially when minor royals give away pictures of themselves to a grateful population, I think they might need then to wonder why the grateful population decide to become Republicans, as indeed Jamaica will do very, very soon, probably followed by a lot more, probably the end of the Commonwealth, the last gasp of the British Empire. Anyway, um, I'm not saying I dislike the royal family. I dislike what they represent in the UK, which is very entrenched, privileged by a very tiny number of people. We don't need them. They can hang around as head of state. I don't have a problem with that. But we don't need them. We don't certainly don't need to donate money to them. They can just gently slide and probably I think in the next five or so years probably as Prince Charles starts to take over I think people will increasingly come to that conclusion. He's not well liked and there's a general feeling that he probably won't be a good one but like I say you have to get what you're given. Anyway I'll wish you a lovely weekend enjoy the bank holiday I know I'm going to because I'm no longer working in a school hooray